Unit 10, Lesson 6, uh, continues where we picked up yesterday uh, with exponential functions and being able to create exponential functions uh, from a relation or a real world problem. But you're going to notice something that's going to be a bit of a review and it's in the title. We're going to be dealing with percent of change today, all right, and exponential functions, okay? So we're going to be putting together two ideas that we've learned about in the past, all right? Uh, keep in mind the same chart. You've seen this uh, half a dozen times already. Just want to remind you that when we talk about uh, percent of growth, that's the same as rate of growth. Please write this in just like you did yesterday. And this is rate of decay. Okay? They mean the same thing when you read them. All right? A brief re review of something you learned earlier um, this school year. Percent of change is a formula where we take the original price and subtract it from the new price. We want the absolute value so it's always positive. Okay, then we divide it by the original price, multiply that answer by 100, and we get our percent of change. Okay, uh, this is going to be handy when we get to the second example and beyond. Okay, uh, but up first, something that's also a bit of a review. Okay, it's just stated differently than you did before. All right, is we want to determine what type of function we have. Okay. And then write an equation so that we could find the nth term of the sequence that we have here, or of the uh, points that we have. All right, so what I'm looking at here is a set of ordered pairs, okay? And remember, we did this from tables before, where we look at the fact that we need to have a pattern in the domain, and there is. This is going up by 1, all right? Same thing in this case, and same thing in this case. That's not the pattern that really matters. That just lets us verify the next pattern. Okay, from negative 5 to positive 15. All right, I'm doing one of two things. I'm either multiplying by negative 3 or I'm adding 20. Okay, when I go from 15 to 35, it becomes clear that it looks like I'm adding 20. All right, and as I continue, you'll see that I am, in fact, adding 20. Okay, now when you learned about this a few lessons ago, we called this an algebraic uh, sequence. Okay, as opposed to geometric sequence, and algebraic sequences are those of linear functions. So when it says state the type of function, this is a linear function. Okay, and we're asked to write the equation. So as we learn when we're doing this, that constant rate of growth is slope because slope is a constant rate of change. All right, so that's our 20x. All right, and then our Y intercept, our B value, is when X is 0, so that's minus 5. All right? So it's a linear function with an equation Y equals 20X minus 5. I always think it's good to plug in these numbers and just quickly verify that that is, in fact, the answer. So, for example, 20 times 2 is 40. 40 minus 5 is 35, so that one checks. Uh, let's go over here. 20 times 4 is 80. 80 minus 5 is 75. So that is the correct function. All right, let's move on. Again, we said the domain has that plus one pattern. All right, we're sticking with kind of basic problems right now. We want to know how do we get from 32 to 16. So from 32 to 16, I'm either subtracting 16 or I'm dividing by 2. But remember, we don't say divide by 2. We say multiply by a half. Okay? So from 16 to 8, am I subtracting or am I multiplying by a half? It becomes clear that I'm multiplying by a half. This is a geometric sequence or series, which means that we have an exponential function. Okay, so exponential functions, what we want to do is find the initial value when x is 0, so that's 4. All right, our growth rate, we've already determined, not growth rate, sorry, our growth factor, or in this case, decay factor, we already determined is one half to the x power. Okay, keep in mind, I know it's dk because the numbers are getting smaller as they go. And because it's dk, I know that when I look at the formula y equals a times b to the x, b is going to be in between zero and one and a half is. Okay? The last one here, we go from one eighth to one half to two to eight. So my range is growing. All right, so this is possible growth, or maybe it's linear. We'll see. All right, the fractions may be difficult, but the way I always think about it is if you go backwards with fractions, 
it may help you find your number. All right, two times four is eight. Okay, so it looks like I'm multiplying by four to go from here to here. All right, so I'm either multiplying by four or I'm subtracting some fraction, but that doesn't matter because if I check the next one, one half times four gets me two, and two times four is eight. So I, I do have an exponential function as well here. And I have all the information I need to write my equation. All right. I have my initial starting value is at a half. My growth factor is four. And there's my exponent. All right. A couple of you tries for you to do. Now we move on to example two, which is going to once again combine the idea of percentage change with what we did yesterday, and that's exponential uh, function word problems. All right. So we have a small business. Profits grew from $30,000 in 2010 to $39,000 in 2011. We want to write an equation to predict future profits for T years, assuming that the company continues to grow at the same rate annually. Okay, so we're assuming that whatever this rate of growth is, it's going to be the same uh, for some time here. All right, so what we need to do is figure out what that growth rate actually was. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract these two numbers. 39,000 here, and then take the absolute value so that it's positive and divide it by our original number, which was $30,000. Okay, when I do that, I'm going to get 0.3, and that means that there is a 30% growth rate. Okay, now that's not the equation, unfortunately. That's just the work to find the R in the equation y equals a times 1 plus r to the x. All right, so now I have that information. So I have y is equal to my initial value, which in this case is going to be $30,000. And then remember, I want to go 2 to the left, which brings me back to the point 3. So 1 plus 0.3 is going to be 1.3 to the x power. All right, so this function that I just created, all right, is going to go ahead and model the growth of this business. So we want to make projected profits for the fifth year of this business. All right, so what that means is I'm going to take my equation. Any of you guys that watch Shark Tank out there or The Profit, all right, these are the type of equations people use to get investors. They say, yes, we could continue to grow 30% if only you give me all your money. And then at that point, five years from now, I'll be making $111,387.90 in that fifth year of business. And if you own 50% of my company, you now get half of that. All right. For those of you that like that show, I'm a big fan of those two shows. All right. Where'd you come from? Go away. All right. Uh, moving on, our last example for today, all right, not a very long lesson, but uh, because we pretty much had most of this yesterday, it's just this new idea of percentage change. So, you go to buy a new car, and this happens with all cars, not just big fancy ones like an Escalade, all right, $60,000. A year later, the value of that car is 54000 Okay, what we're going to do is write a function that shows the value of this vehicle in a given year, assuming that the value would decrease at the same rate annually. Okay, so again, that idea of assuming the same constant rate every year of, of decline. Okay, so again, the idea of decreases, this is going down in value. Okay, so I'm setting up a decay problem. All right, take my original price and my new price. And I want the absolute value of that difference. And I'm going to divide by that. And doing that, subtracting, dividing by that, is going to bring me to... 0.1, which means I have a 10% decay in value, or decline in value. It's probably a better term for uh, this situa situation. All right, so decay formula looks like this. Y is equal to the initial value uh, with 100% minus the rate of decline to the x power. So my initial value of this vehicle is $60,000. And from that, I'm going to subtract 0.1. So 1 minus that 0.1 is going to give me a 0 0.9 to 
to the x power. Okay? So again, I, I know I said we have a 10% decay, but remember, we always use decimal values, uh, not percent values. So that's my equation to predict the value. All right, so we want to look at this and say, hey, eight years from now, how much is this car going to be worth? Okay, very simple. We have the equation set up already. There it is. Now we want to know in eight years, what's the value of this vehicle? Well, once again, once you have the formula, it's just a simple, go ahead and type that into your calculator, and you should end up with a value of $25,000. $828.03. So, for example, if you're going to get a new Escalade uh, eight years later and you're trading your old one in, you're hoping to get this much money if you took good care of it. All right. Uh, a couple more you try problems for you to do and uh, some different types of questions instead of the old boring ones that we've had pretty much all year. Uh, see if you can answer these. And uh, if you have any no's, again, please come in for help uh, during 1C time. Um, and we'll see you in class.